Hello everyone, my name's Josh, um, I'm a, a celebrant and we've got a really good panel here tonight and so I just uh, wanted to I suppose introduce you, guys, introduce you guys to them, we're going to have a few questions and um, talk about creating a wedding because that's uh, something that's really passionate, um, it's a really passionate kind of a heartfelt thing for all of us that we love creating awesome weddings and uh, the thing that you'll find with people that have been doing it for more than a few seconds, like I can say of these guys, and myself, that um, you really start to kind of come back from the the Pinterest kind of not to not to crap all over Pinterest, <laughs> but you kind of come back from the Pinterest side of things and the blog side of things. You actually come to this really meaningful, heartfelt like let's make an awesome wedding that's for you, as opposed to like this is an awesome wedding to be featured somewhere or whatnot. And so um, so I can tell that all of these guys have got a really good uh, heart for that to kind of find out what's important to you and what's what's an awesome wedding for you. So that's kind of where my questions are going to go tonight. Um, after we've had a chat, uh, it, please, like we would be desperate for you guys to ask some questions so that we can actually address things that are on your mind. Maybe it's specific to your wedding, like it's not completely useful to everyone else, ask it. Because um, we will just be sitting here with uh, blank faces hoping you guys would ask a question. So if you think of that, just, you know, store it up, we'll ask you later. Uh, but could I introduce you to uh, the panel tonight? So. I'm Josh Withers, Jason Lucas uh, from uh, Lucas & Co Photography, Jared Lucas from Jared Lucas Films, uh, Brendan, I don't know your last name, from Anise Catering. Harris. Harris, there we go. And, uh, and he's also got the new restaurant at the Coomera Westfield, uh, Piata uh, Woodfired Pizza. Woodfired Deli, get down there and get that. And uh, Amy Rosenthal from uh, The Perfect Party Co. And uh, I'm, uh, I know at least three of these guys really well. I've just met Brendo tonight. Um, Amy actually designed my very first expo stand and it was that good that people at the expo thought that I was doing styling because it was so well styled. <laughs> like, no, 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 it says celebrant. It's, I'm a celebrant. It's not a... So, uh, <laughs> thanks, Amy. Thanks. <laughs> she excels that well that she actually kind of goes beyond the mark. <laughs> So uh, as a starter, I thought I'd um, get everyone to kind of just introduce uh, themselves and uh, and why they do what they do. So Jace, over to you. So as Josh said, my name is Jason. I'm a photographer. My business is called Lucas Co Photography. I've been shooting for pretty much my whole life. Like. I got into it after high school. I didn't really know what to do and was just kind of shooting random stuff. Got asked to do a few weddings. Long story short, I um, started my own business about five years ago. It was more on the um, encouragement of my wife because I was a bit reluctant to jump into it full time, but she said, you should just do it. So I did. And uh, five years later, I've been doing this yeah, full time and it's been amazing. But um. Yeah, pretty much shoot only weddings and I love doing it. It's it's an amazing thing. Like you get to hang out with people on one of the best days of their life and just tell their story. So it's it's awesome. Hello. Um, yeah, so I'm Jared Lucas. Um, I've been shooting film, wedding films now for like three years. Um, before that, it was pretty much just a massive hobby of mine. Like. I'd had a camera in my hand since I was like a tiny kid shooting breakdance videos or I'd literally like strap a little digital camera to a skateboard, like duct tape it and then push it down the path and then try to shoot like a dolly shot, like a moving shot. <laughs> so that was like my DIY camera setup. And yeah, I think it was, I shot like a friend's wedding for free, maybe back in Tasmania where I was brought up. Um, and then from there, I think someone else saw that video and then, you know, wanted something similar. So I then did theirs and then I think, I think the bolts started rolling and then started to get a few on the Gold Coast. Um, and yeah, I, I love being a part of like a wedding day. I love capturing all those moments right from the beginning of the day to the end and then compiling all that into like a nice little, you know, highlight film. So I've been doing that for three years now and yeah, still loving it. All right, as um, my name's Brendan, uh, Anise Catering. Um, we've been catering now six years, I think, but I've been cooking for 
22. <laughs> um, since basically straight out of high school, love cooking, uh, never gets old for me. Um, the reason we kind of got into catering was um, I sort of fell out of a job, well, didn't fall out of a job, but was working at Ray's on Water Goes as the head chef. Um, that sort of slowed up. Didn't want to leave Byron and then got asked to do a few weddings and same kind of story. It just kind of rolled on from there and now we're sort of almost six years in and things are moving. And I think for me, like why I like catering weddings as opposed to cooking in a restaurant, um, it's a bigger process and the, you get to see all the different moving parts all come together in sometimes a really dynamic and beautiful way and that for me is what keeps me doing it. it um, when it all comes together in the right fashion, it's a pretty amazing thing to watch it all be a beautiful part. And and it's just, yeah. I mean, it's not it's not easy. I won't lie. It's far from it's far from an easy thing to do. I I get to the end of the night. And I'm like, oh, you know, <laughs> shoot me in the face, you know. <laughs> but but you know, you, you at the end of that, you get to see all the pictures and you get to see what it all happened. You get to see the smile on everybody's faces and they come and say thanks for such a beautiful day, we had an amazing time and you can really get to feel the appreciation from everybody and that's what keeps me doing it. So moving on to Amy over here. Well, evening. Uh, my name is Amy and I am very fortunate that I actually have a couple of hats. So I am the Perfect Party Co, which is a planning, styling, floristry hire business. Uh, and then together with my partner, Michael, we also have out of the dark event lighting. So in terms of what we do, we basically provide for the pretties. I consider us the cream on top. These guys are the necessities and I'm the one that, you know, if the budget allocates, it's nice to have. Um, I look at what we do as basically creating the atmosphere that enables everybody to enjoy their evening. I always think that if you're a guest and you walk into a space and it's naked, your energy levels and what you give as a guest is never as much as what it is when you walk into a space and go, oh my God, they've really done something. They, they're after this to be a special event. And that's the space that I hope to create. Um, I fell into events, I think like we all did. <laughs> Um, I, absolutely none of us had this plan from no, we're eight years no. old and I'm going to be a stylist. We didn't see the, the career guidance counsellor and go, you know what, I really think weddings are my deal. I really, like the pretty things, that's me. I uh, went and did international business and law. I'm a primary school teacher um, that went into interior design and somehow ended up in events. And I look at our events as basically temporary interior design spaces they're just for a shorter period of time but they take all the same elements um, and we require all the same facets out of it so um, that's how I tackle everything and I'm fortunate I get to do weddings and corporates and all sorts of things but the biggest thing is that I get to touch not literally um, but, you know, <laughs> <laughs> emotionally I get to have an impact upon so many people um, every single week and generally create some memorable moments, which is what my greatest joy is. Hold on to the mic, Angus, because I'll come back to you in a second, um, uh, particularly because I want to ask a question about what you just said. Uh, but out of all of us here, whose parents tried to convince us not to do this? <laughs> but Jared's like, like, he's like, yeah, do it. <laughs> this is a good idea. <laughs> The, the thing about the wedding industry is you find uh, that most people that are actively employed in it, um, we've we've done it kind of despite the best um, business plan or circumstances have kind of found our way because we're trying to uh, marry our passion, what we love doing, um, with also paying rent, which is such a beautiful dichotomy that we won't discuss tonight. <laughs> uh, but to introduce myself, I'm just kind of, I didn't say why I do what I do. Um, obviously, I'm Josh Withers, and I uh, I marry people, and I do that because I went to a family wedding. Maybe um, must be like ten or eleven years ago, and we were all so excited. I don't know if everyone's been to that wedding. We were all really excited that they're getting married because, you know, obviously there's more to it than like oh they fell in love and that was nice. But like like no, she needs to marry him. There is no one else. <laughs> like he is the guy for her and so we're all super excited that um that, that they're getting married and we all get up to harvey bay and the ceremony didn't reflect our excitement 
like we, we were just like so bummed that the celebrant was like, yeah, it's another wedding, just talked in a monotone voice and didn't care. And, and I was just really bummed that that celebrant didn't at least have my level of excitement as like a cousin, let alone like a sister or a mum or whatever. Uh, like I'm just a cousin and I was amped. And, uh, and I left that thinking, I wonder if I could do a better job than that, which like, is that something all of you guys thought? Like you saw a thing, you thought, I reckon I could do a better job than that. <laughs> it's a little bit arrogant. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but Ames, I, I wanted to come back to you, um, particularly on because you, you mentioned the pretties, and I, I've always got to check myself because, like, my my heart is on the non-pretties. Like, I'm on the words and the meaning, and like, why are we doing this? Like, what does this tradition mean? Let's tear it apart. And it's almost like a like a deep kind of intellectual, like almost too intellectual. If you let me go. Uh, and so you could sometimes think if you heard me talk about that, that I would completely disregard the pretties and we're just like, let's do it in an empty warehouse. We don't need stuff. Uh, but in no way is that true because I equally value, um, use the word space, that uh, even in this atmosphere, I hope everyone feels the same way. I feel very comfortable in this atmosphere. Like we're not too far from you, but we're not too close. Um, you know, space matters and the space where you do things matters and the number of people that are in that space and how it feels. I often like to go down the line of the senses, like does it smell nice? Does it look nice? Does it feel nice? Uh, you know, does it sound nice? That's why this is the PA system we use for weddings and I like it because it sounds nice. So going down the different senses. Um, so could you just kind of go back on why, like why pretty matters? Because pretty does matter. Pretty definitely does matter. And in our industry, there's definitely a lot of conversation about you know, what is the true essence of a wedding? What, where should we be putting our value? Where should we be spending our money? It, are these things necessary, unnecessary, etc.? And each and every day there's a new product on the market to tempt us. Oh, you've got to go to this wedding and it had X, Y, Z. So therefore you should have X, Y, Z. And the bottom line is there's no rules. There is absolutely no rules anymore. You can have it fully decked out to the nines and have every bell and whistle you want. We can have absolutely nothing. But it is definitely worth considering the built environment and the environment in which we're welcoming people into. So we always say, you know, like a home-cooked dinner is, is hearty, it's welcoming, it's um, comforting. I want that for my wedding. That's what I want. I don't want a cold, harsh environment where I feel like, oh, can I put my bag on the table? Oh, I, I don't know. I don't, want to, I don't want to disrupt that. Am I meant to use that napkin or is that just meant to stay there folded and looking awesome? Because it looks awesome, but fuck, I've got to wipe my mouth. <laughs> like, I, I want to know. And so these are all considerations and they're definitely, they're each an individual consideration because as an individual, you might be a very particular lineal person where you like everything and it's all measured and it's all there and it looks great or you could be a haphazard bring it together yeah throw that down you know it's a shared platter meal you know it's a nice welcoming you know not a three course plated we're all absolutely different but it's important to consider I think the environment in which we want to convey and I think that for any type of event that we want to have, be it a wedding, a baby shower, naming ceremony, whatever it may be, it's important to consider um, that space in which we're working in because it can have just festoons and that beautiful warm light is welcoming and softening. It can then throw the rug on the floor and the cushions on the, on the chairs. It's all different layers. It's like an onion. You can go keep going or you can have just the basic elements. Um, but I do definitely think that it makes a massive impact upon each and every one of our events. So I'll ask a similar question of everyone. So over to you, Brendo. Why does food matter? Because it's perfectly legal and okay to get married without food. Like there's nothing in the marriage act about having a sausage roll in your hand. Yeah, <laughs> it should be. More party boys. <laughs> So, so we what could is just food get matter? Domino's delivered for the. Yeah. Dude, you joke, but I've done a wedding before where there was um, the you know, like what do you call like catering sandwiches? You know, your yeah, your quarter yeah, sandwich. sandwiches. Yeah, yeah, and they and they just that was what they wanted. Like, cool, that's yeah. I think look, as Amy said, I think everybody's individual, and it really comes down to what's important for you on the day. I mean, we've done weddings where we've catered really, really simple stuff, um, and we've seen a lot of that lately. We've seen a lot of like push in the market for just really simple strip back sort of food. And we we even sort of opened a secondary catering business, which was my hat that I've got on, 
which is just a street food style. And it's again, it's like stripped right back, food truck style, you know, tacos, bow, payers, that sort of thing. But again, like that's not for everybody. We did a wedding last week and it was like this, just the full extravaganza, canapes, oyster bars, um, you know, three course meal, plated sit down, fireworks at the end. and But everybody has their own take on what is important to them. So I think it really just comes down to, you know, feeling into what matters to you as, you know, individuals and, you know, bringing those into your wedding and making sure that all the moving parts for that reflect who you are and what you want on your day, you know. So um, but that's what we as professionals are here to do is to try to help you give get what you want. Um, so I think bringing it to why is food important, I think, you know, if you're someone like me or I'm sure a lot of you just like to eat out, who enjoy a good meal, mum cooks a good lasagna at home and you want that for your wedding, then I think that's why food is important, you know, yeah. because people want to, when they go to a special event, they want to feel satiated and comforted and like leaving with all these special memories but also feeling like, not feeling like they have to go to Macca's on the way because they haven't had dinner, you know. So Which I think honestly, that's why food like, is important. That's the measure of a good caterer. Like, yeah. I, like yeah. we all talk about it. Like, <laughs> yeah, did you have to go to Macca's after Jack and Jules? Yeah, yeah I had to go to Macca's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fortunately, that hasn't happened for us. So, you know, <laughs> um, it's usually us stopping at Macca's on the way after a wedding, you know. Um, but, yeah, I, that's why I think food is important because we all like to eat and we all appreciate good food and, I think when you are having a wedding or when you, you want to put on an ex, like something that's special for you because you're marrying that special person in your life, then having good food is a big part of that. You know? yeah. So, uh, Jared, why does film matter? And just I feel sometimes the word film could be because there's, there's, there's like analogue film, so moving, why do moving pictures matter? Why does moving <laughs> video matter? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I was just thinking before, like, when we, when we want to record like a certain moment, like when we're out traveling or we're out at a birthday party or something like that. And like, what's that decision between, you know, choosing either photo or video. And sometimes we might decide we want to hear the cheers. We want to hear the celebration. Like you want to hear those moments as well as seeing those moments. And I feel like when you watch your video back, you can also not only see, but only, like you can hear you, Hear those moments taking place as well, if that makes sense. So I think like a big one for my own wedding film, like when we watch it back, it's like I get to hear how the vow sounded on that day in that moment. Um, and the same with the speeches as well, being able to hear speeches from loved ones and hear the way they said it in that, on that day in that moment is like I think there's something so special about that. And even be able to hear like, you know, on, on like personally my wedding video, like my wife, coughing up as she's trying to say her vows like I think it's all those moments that tie in so it's like in years to come when you watch back your video it's just a moment of hitting play and then your whole day you know playing out before you if that makes sense and it's sort of like it brings back all those elements it's like the cheers the screaming the excitement the vows the speeches and um yeah I think it's the whole experience of it I guess yeah and Jace, why should we uh, get photos? What do photos matter? Um, it's really interesting because I was thinking about that. Like, I had a good amount of time to think about the question, obviously, because it was asked down there. But I was thinking about why does it matter? And it's funny because I think I feel like probably a lot of even couples don't necessarily think about that because probably where even the wedding industry is right now, it's almost a given like, oh, who's your photographer? Like you just have to get one you know what I mean like it's it's just every, you assume you have to book a photographer but um I guess on one on one sense or one level you don't really need one everyone's got iPhones these days and like can kind of just take a photo and do whatever but um I guess on the other hand and why I kind of feel like why I do what I do is that there's there are like if you think over the span of your life like the significant moments is like your wedding day, when your kids are born. Like there's only, well, wedding day is weirdly one of those like few times it's really significant in your life. And 
I think even for me, when a celebrant says, hey, why don't you just kind of leave your phones in your pocket? There's a photographer here to kind of do what mm. you usually do yeah. is kind of sums up in some ways what we do. And there's definitely a lot of crossover between yeah. what we do. But it is, I look at what I do as um, storytelling and it is, it is a bit weird, like, and I, I say to couples, like, yeah, it probably will be a bit weird, like, there's some dude there with a camera taking photos of you all day. Like, when you're getting ready, you've probably never been photographed getting ready before, unless you're, I don't know, someone, yeah. <laughs> Something very specific. But um, it's, on the other hand, it's, it's like the one chance you get to do that. And it's, it's a... It's a really beautiful thing, and that's why I think that if people can um, switch off from what we're doing and just kind of be in the moment, it, yeah. it then stands as this, like, historic archive that you get to look back on. Mm. And that's why even from what I do, too, I don't really... Even getting back to that thing of, like, how'd you get into what you were doing was probably, for me personally, it was kind of like seeing a lot of people doing cringy stuff on their wedding day or just feel like they needed... Like, I still get it from mainly parents is, like, certain things they have to do on their wedding day is like oh hang on i need i'm the mother so you need to get a photo of me doing this to the groom or something like this i'm like oh if you want like <laughs> but it's it's entirely up to you because like when you see that photo your memory of that moment will be oh yeah that's when the photographer asked me to do that like yeah. so my my whole vibe is i just want to tell the story and yeah it is a bit weird that you got a photographer flying around all day but my aim is to blend in the shadows and just tell that story so then from that moment onwards and that's what i always love is from our couples when they email me oh all these things happen that i forgot about or like i didn't know was happening because you know you were shooting the guests reacting that as i came down the aisle and things like that i think it's like it's that it's that just bringing the whole day to life through photos i was on the uh, ferry to tangaluma the other day for a wedding and uh, I'm on the top deck, and there's dolphins. If you don't, if you haven't been to Tangaluma, the the best part about it is the ferry trip. <laughs> I love the, I just love being on the ferry, and there's dolphins everywhere, and and the dolphins are jumping, and someone goes, "There's dolphins!" And I turn and look, and my first reaction was to go for my pocket and grab the phone. And then as I did, I thought, you know, what? I'm just going to enjoy this. And everyone else is scrambling for their phone, and and there were dolphins, and I enjoyed the dolphins, and everyone else had to get their phone, and they, they probably missed it. Um, and uh, on your wedding day particularly, it's kind of nice just to have someone else kind of be your own personal photographer and, like, I can just enjoy this yeah, and I don't have to photograph it. It's kind of cool. Yeah, totally. Yeah. That's awesome. So I want to get a little bit technical with everyone now um, and a question to each one of you again. If you can just your broad categorizations of the different kinds of people in your field, like I know photography, and I'm, I don't even know enough to explain it, but there's, like, documentary and... Uh, it's photojournalistic and I like there's, there's probably there's probably what what two three four five categories and so like like how would you broadly describe those different categories and which one are you good question <laughs> <laughs> it's funny i i used to say i was like a um a doc documentary or slash um journalistic photographer but then at the same time when it comes to bridal shoots I want to get a good photo and if there's I can clearly see like it would be much better if we stood over here than over here I'm gonna I will tell people to kind of let's go and I, I try to do it in a chill way like I'm not I'm, I'm aware that the couple they're not models and I'm not you know they're not used to this every day so there's that there's that element of it but I think it's it's a blend of all those all those categories the main thing I just don't like doing is cheesy photos <laughs> That's, so, so how would how do you think people would describe cheesy photos? Like, what's that category? Uh, it really depends on your opinion, because I still get people would ask me to do cheesy ones, and I don't have a problem doing it if that's what they want to do. Because I'm, you don't turn your nose up in disgust, and that is no, against my artistic like I do integrity. Privately, but I, 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 <laughs> internally, maybe, but like, like, like you, you'll day, text Sarah about it. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> they asked me to do this, babe, but <laughs> but like at the same time, I'm. I, I just view myself as their photographer. You know what I mean? Like that paid me to be there and I'm I like it sounds cheesy, but I get on well with all my couples and I just want to have a good time with them and if they want to do something a bit more cheesy, like that's their vibe. And my my whole intention is kinda of like for them to have an awesome day. So if that's if that's part of their day, that's okay. But like I 
usually though, like people, you know, look at how I shoot and what I do and, you know, if people want a certain style that's not really my style, they're probably going to book that kind of photographer anyway, so. Uh, before everyone else answers, I, I just I suppose you should categorize because there's probably two broader categorizations across the whole wedding industry because there's companies in each genre that would have, like there's, photog there's photography studios that have 30 or 50, I don't know, a large number of photographers, uh, whereas Lucas & Co, um, Jace turns up. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it a, sounds businessy, but it's just me. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, Ivy will be there soon. Like yeah. she should be there in a year or two. Yeah, yeah. maybe. Yeah, okay. Um, and says that obviously Jared's literally put his name on the business card, and uh, and so so the category. And this is me as well. I don't have thirty. I don't have got no staff. Um, so so there are other broad categorizations that there are companies that have they're very large, more of a corporate feel. So to carry categorize everyone here, this is much more personal. Um, but Jared, how would you categorize the different video kind of styles and which one are you? Yeah, okay. Um, yes, I think it's true what you said. It were more personal, I guess you would say. Like we try to not distance ourselves from the couples and just be like, this is another client, or this is another wedding. Let's just, you know, knock that out and move on to the next one. It's like it is a very personal thing, a wedding day. Um, and I think very similar to Jace in photography, um, I guess I try to – document the day as best I can as it is like I don't try to fill in the gaps with things that didn't actually happen or you know change change how the preps taking place that sort of thing like we'll step in when we need to with like portraiture and things like that but I think with the whole the whole vibe of the day still needs to be their wedding day like that couple's wedding day and I feel like for me I don't want to step in and get in the way of that I just want to document that as it unfolds. So I guess, I guess my style is more that documentary sort of style, and maybe on the on the other side of the scale is maybe a bit more, like you said, commercial. Uh, maybe more of a team, like my, maybe a group of videographers. Um, so you might get that more commercial look. I guess it depends what you're after. So you can have that more documentary style, I guess you'd say like handheld, like in the moment sort of shots or the very, I'd almost say American just because I've seen a lot of American weddings that are quite, you know. It's even more big, Hollywood, yeah? Yeah, more, I, think, I think it's more based off that Hollywood looks. It's those big wide angles, dramatic, like dramatic pans and those type of shots. But it depends what, it really depends what style you're after. Um, yeah, and I guess for me, I, yeah, I try to stay more that documentary style, but then still have a, what would you say, like a, an element, yeah, an element of some more posed stuff, but in the right places, if that makes sense. So while we're going out on that bridal shoot, I'll make sure I get some really nice shots, just like the photographer would of those portraits, and I'll make sure the light's good, I'll, I'll make sure of all those things. But during the other parts of the day where I feel like, you know, I don't need to step in and I'll just let those moments play out. Then I'll chill out and just shoot, shoot it as it happens, I guess. Yeah. Brendo. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Hey. Um, so, uh, so the, the different kind of <laughs> caterers and which one are you? Um, oh God, there's so many different types of catering and uh, look, the world of food, it's a big place. Um, and I guess where we sort of fall into that, I mean, we've got a pretty broad spectrum of what we do because we've, we've got the two tiers of we do a simple and we, we, do, we do some really high-end weddings, we do some corporate stuff. So we, we sort of kind of cater to a lot of needs. But the world of food, it's, it's a big place and, and trying to sort of navigate where that sits for you personally in a, in a wedding is that's a question that, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm here to obviously help and try to help people navigate what that, that they're looking for. But to, you know, to put us into a category is, is pretty difficult. Could I just, try? You could try, yeah. What yeah. won't you do? What do I do? No, no, um, no, 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 no. What won't you do? So I say, Brenda, will you do this? And you're like, no, yeah. I don't. Like, I won't do that. What won't I, I do? do um, well, there's, not much, there's, not much we, there's not much we wouldn't do. Like, we, we're there to 
We're there to serve. Like, but a wedding too line. small, a wedding too big. Um, I, no, want, done, I want. I want. I mean, we've done weddings for like twenty people, and we've done weddings for three hundred. So, is there a type of food like I want? Um, I, I, I yeah. Jewish food. I don't know. Look, I mean, <laughs> okay, there. I, I probably haven't done too many Jewish weddings. <laughs> They're good weddings. You Muscle get off and all, but um, no, there's not much we 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 can't do. So we do fit a pretty broad spectrum of. A lot of different. We, we've do, we've done Japanese style weddings. We've done really country outback style. We've done big corporate stuff where it's just really fine, delicate canapes up in Brisbane. You know, we do food truck stuff. Like it's a pretty broad spectrum. And I guess answering that question of like, you know, where what do you do and and how do you fit into that? I mean, I guess we just we just sort of cover a lot of bases, but trying to trying to help. The brides and grooms navigate what they want for their wedding day is probably what we try to do the most. So what I do is that would be my answer is I just try to facilitate giving the brides and grooms or, or anyone for that matter. It might not just be a wedding. It might just be an event. It might be a corporate thing. It might just be a 40th dinner that you know they're they're inviting like a group of their friends over and they just want someone to cook. So we send one of the chefs up there to cook them a nice dinner because they don't want to do it. We're just, we're there to basically help them get exactly what they want for the day and that's what we try to do and that's why I like doing it. Yeah, the variety is just awesome. So know? I know a few caterers can't do, like if there's no electricity, like if they're having a wedding out in the middle of a field in the middle yeah. of nowhere, like, yeah. like, like, so those technical limitations, you no, can work no, with those? No, no, but that, it does raise a good point because, I mean, when you are doing weddings, there's, there's so many moving parts and one of the biggest moving parts is the the logistics in getting a wedding to happen somewhere where there isn't already something pre-assembled for that wedding to actually take place. So you could be in a paddock out in the middle of Canungra where there's just nothing and I mean I've done weddings with Rachel where we've actually done weddings like that and we've had to bring everything in, you know, absolutely power, generators, water, like the whole lot and build a little catering kitchen, flooring, put a marquee up and, and actually have the floor built up because the land's on a slope and I've got my staff running up and down the hill just hating me, just hating me. But there's, there's so many moving parts to that catering element and I mean for us uh, and Rach would be able to testify to this is um, Making sure you understand those moving parts is a big part of anyone's special day, particularly if you're doing it in something that isn't already pre-existing. So there's so many facets to what we do, but some of the logistics that go behind what we do are probably the biggest, and we rely on those the most. Which is yeah. a big shout out to Rach from the Events Lounge. Like having a wedding planner is like there's a lot of gaps that sometimes we don't think yeah. about. Yeah, and um definitely yeah, yeah. like, like you, if, you, if you're having no well, i don't know what kind of wedding you don't need a wedding planner for but yeah. if you're having you know four people at a restaurant maybe you don't need a wedding planner <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but but there's definitely a level where you're like i could actually do with some real expertise here because yeah. uh like a, a wedding is one of those things where you've never had one before hopefully you'll never have one again and you've probably the first time maybe in the last time you get your know, odd hundred people together yeah. and i don't know like if i was having four people over for a dinner party i'd freak out because i'm just not a good chef yeah. Um, no, I am not a chef, <laughs> let alone a good one. <laughs> and so, uh, so if anything more than four, I'm like, just uh, I'm all out. I'll just hand out beers and I'm good. So yeah. So shout out to Rach. Thanks, Rach. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Amy, I, I, I was talking to you before the event because I think a lot of people uh, that are getting married get the wedding stylist, the wedding coordinator, wedding planner, day of. There's all these little titles that kind of. And a lot of them do fall on you, and sometimes you'll take you'll just take the responsibility, and sometimes it'll be given to you. So, so how do you kind of categorise your end of the market, the pretty <laughs> end, and then and then who are you in that end? Um, really complex, awesome question. Um, I'm probably an oddity uh, in our industry because I do provide for planning, styling, floristry, and hire, and I. That came out of an, a necessity to be controlling. Um, <laughs> it really did. It, it got to a point where I was um, incapable of articulating the concepts in my head to somebody else, 
let alone then trusting that person to then execute them. So I And it's just not polite to say you fucking idiot in the it. middle of a planning meeting. That's not me. Like, you know, so um, I think the development of the facets that we provide for under the Perfect Party Code developed as a result of going, well, I can't articulate that. I don't necessarily want to trust somebody else to do that. I like the manipulation of that element at the very last minute. Yeah. Um, so I taught myself how to do those things. So I do the floristry. I found that I couldn't get anything unique on a higher front, so I bought higher stuff. Um, in opposition to that, Rach has the ability to articulate. She also has the ability to trust and also an incredibly good crew in which she does that with. So um, what I call my, I, I am a stylist. Foremost, I am a stylist. The planning for me comes as a result of trying to execute my styling. Rach is a planner. Styling comes as a result of her planning. So um, that's probably just the two of us in the room and how different we are in what we provide for. Um, in terms of styling, and every Tom, Dick and Harry thinks they're a stylist, every Tom, Dick and Harry thinks they're an interior designer or a stylist or, you know, I don't have the ability to put myself together like this is the best I've looked in a long time. <laughs> but you go home and my and my house looks great. <laughs> Even my warehouse is getting there. Um, and I think that what well what I value as a stylist is that I can say, yeah, that looks great. But I can say that yeah, that looks great, but not in that space. Or that doesn't reflect you guys. Or if we multiply that by your hundred guests, it's not going to work. Or then we go to the next level and go, okay, but it's also not in your budget. <laughs> That's the next element. So I think a true stylist has that ability to, one, interpret your concepts and ideas and what you'd like to see. And I think of myself as a filter. I take all of those elements and I go, okay, you know what, there's a real uh, disconnect between your venue and your style or your style and your flowers or your stationery and your dress or your florals and your dress or whatever. And I manage to bring that through a funnel and come out hopefully with something that's a very coherent measured sort of recipe of all of these elements go together to reflect something that you wanted to see on your day. The next element that a stylist has the ability to do, a true stylist I believe, is to think on their feet because nothing goes to plan. Nothing goes to plan. The best laid plans fuck up every single weekend. So, um, for instance, I was out at Spice's Hidden Vale last weekend and we had beautiful wire grid screens, the most stunning seating plan. Like, we had great stationery last weekend. Um, set it all up. I was rock and rolling onto the ceremony, set that up. The most horrendous wind came over the headland. I had staked these grids in. They fell over, fully snapped the seating plan. Anybody, like the, the event coordinator was crying. She's like, I don't know, where's everybody going to find their seats? I'm like, babe, it's like 50 people. I'm pretty sure they'll walk up and down the aisle if, if need be. But I think a true stylist then has the ability to go, you know what, that was a great piece of stationery. How can we salvage it? How are we going to problem solve it? So the Stanley knife came out and all of a sudden the seating plan became three pieces and a bit more floral and, you know, Bob's your uncle. And we've got a new seating plan. A true stylist, I believe, has the ability to think on their feet. And most definitely, if you are looking at having a wedding or any event that's not within a standard venue, a stylist and a great planner are really good assets to have because the likelihood of being thrown something is very, very high. <laughs> If you're in a known venue and they've got venue coordinators, etc., they're tackling those problems every week. They've ironed them out because they're pumping through those events every single week. They might still get the odd occurrence and generally that's as a result of another element that's come in. It might be a guest that plays up or it might be a vendor that runs late or whatever it may be. But in a set venue, they know what they're up against. If you want to be in a field, which we all freaking love, you've got to have your professionals on your side. Um, and I, I don't know how you sit down with a stylist or a planner and, and say, if you answer these three questions, like, you're legit. Um, but look at their body of work and have a meeting with them. See if you connect with them. It's the same with each of us up here. We're all so passionate about being able to project 
you and your individuality as an individual as an and as a couple um that it's important that you like us and not just fangirl over us and be like oh you know you do really cool work and you did the wedding of da 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 but they actually connect that you have the ability to say hey Ames like my budget's x like what can you do or hey you know my mum's a fuckwit but I've got to have her there you know like which is a legitimate thing like that's not a made up thing it's common it's common (laughs) but you've got to have that relationship with each and every one of us because you've got to be able to tell the boys hey you know be mindful of my mum you know or whatever it may be um it's important to have that relationship and it's a two-way street it really is so um in terms of vetting you know who's in the industry and who's good and who's not look at the body of work meet with us back on instagram have a chat yeah um and i hopefully you hit the right relationships oh i was actually really surprised i don't know if anyone cares or knows but instagram just had a thing where if um if you've got more than i don't know a number of followers they now publicly disclose some information about you on Instagram, like when you first joined, that kind of thing. And I was like, October 2008, oh, my God, I really need to scroll back and archive some shit. That was not a good time. <laughs> no one needs to, don't scroll back, please. It was a... <laughs> uh, to answer the question on my behalf as well, uh, and I'm going to give you not a good answer, but there's 9,000-odd celebrants in Australia and maybe about 15,000 religious ministers um, for you to choose from, <laughs> because and the thing with particularly with a celebrant or if you choose to go a minister, they're um they're all individuals, and I can tell you proudly and confidently that there is not a single human on the earth that does what I do because I'm I'm me, and I have my background and experiences and my worldview and my beliefs and, and just who I am um, that makes up me, and so and that's what makes me as a celebrant that. You know, if, if we've got a similar worldview and if we like each other, then I'll probably be an awesome celebrant for you. Um, but if you're like, you know, he's got a nice haircut, but a bit of a weirdo, like, please don't hire me. Because um, there's, you know, there's, there's so many other celebrants in the world. And, uh, you know, my, my grandma always presses me like, I just don't understand. I went to Iceland for a ceremony. She goes, why did someone take you to Iceland? And she doesn't understand. So I told her there were no other celebrants left. <laughs> I was the only one left. Um, but that's why that's why you'll see people will take like Jason and I in Italy and Croatia next year. That, that, why that happens is because people get a personal connection with us. Um, plus, there's no more photographers as well. I understand you, you're the only one left. <laughs> so, uh, so as you would with everyone, and particularly with your celebrant, just find someone that you really vibe with because, uh, like, we are in control of the words, um, the environment helps and these guys are capturing it and there's food going into your mouth but the celebrants literally speaking your marriage and your celebration to existence and so that's you know i don't really know how to categorize celebrants other than to say there's i don't know 24 thousand of us so good luck <laughs> um I, I wanted to approach one last thing and then if anything else comes up i'll ask it but please if you guys have some questions i'll get you to throw your hand up after this um and uh, i'll let each one of you answer it in your own way but uh, the, the, big, the big hidden secret in any business, like you go into a Maserati dealership and trying to ask the price of the car, it's an awkward question. Um, so I'm not going to say how much, but just in whatever vibe you have, can you talk about product and price and just, just a starting conversation? I understand, particularly with you, Amy, like your budget could go from 50 bucks to 50,000. So there's no real set thing, but... Just an opening conversation about how to have that conversation about pricing and budgeting and what it costs. And just so that everyone here can kind of walk into that conversation just like 1% more knowledgeable. Because that's that's really awkward to say how much. It's just, so just if you're going to unawkward it for everyone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like money and sex, politics, the three <laughs> conversations that we don't have. Um, but money is a really important conversation to have when you're planning a wedding or absolutely any event. Um, it's funny because on my online questionnaire, when you first sort of asked me a question, because I still don't have a bloody website eight years in, um, is budget. Have you got any idea? And the amount of times it comes back empty. And it's fair to say, oh, I I don't know. I haven't been there before. I haven't done that. I, I don't know which elements of your services I want to inquire about. But the bottom line is that everybody actually has a figure in their head that if I come back and say, hey, you know what, it's going to be 10 grand, you go, oh, fuck. 
If I come back and go five, you're like, oh, shit, sign me up. You've got some level of expectation there. Whether you want to articulate it or not, that's one thing. Like you may not want to put it straight on your inquiry form, but I tell you what, it helps a lot if you do because I'm not going to come back to you and go, good luck, like, you know, best of luck with that two grand you've got. Um, go and talk to this person. But I'm going to say, okay, you know what we can do for that? We could do X, Y, Z or we could manipulate this to get the best value out of your funds. And that's what a planner and a stylist does. That's what these guys do. Yes, they've got their set packages, etc. but I know that if someone came to you and said my budget for catering is X and I'd really like to do this, you go, okay, cool, we can probably modify that and we can make it work or whatever it may be. Um, and it comes down to that honesty and communication again. All I want to know is how much you've got to play with. If that value is low or high or it changes, that's no trouble at all. But if I have no expect, no idea as to where your expectation is, I'm going to spend X amount of time presenting you a proposal saying, hey, I think we can do X, Y, Z, pricing it out, and then you come back and go, oh, actually, you know what? I really think we've only got half of that amount. It's like, okay, cool. Well, we can't do any of this, but I've already presented it to you, and now you're like, oh, but I really want it. And then me trying to cut it back, you're like, oh, oh I, I, I don't want to let go of that element. But you know what? I don't want you to have it. And it's not because I don't, I'm being nasty and because you can't afford it. It's because I don't want you to wake up the day after your wedding and go, fuck, we've got to pay for this. Nobody should wake up the first day of their marriage and go, how do we pay for that awesome celebration we had? Be realistic. Sit down as a couple, go through your budget, think about what you can allocate if family is allocating any funds and then go, what is a value? And then proportion it down. It's a really simple base, like maths, and I'm really shit at maths, but it's basic. You sit down and you go, here are my necessities. I need somebody to legally marry me. The rest, I'd love somebody to capture it. I really value videography. You know what? We should actually probably eat. Oh, we'd like it to look good. It's all just ratioed down as to where you find your value. For me, it's probably not the room to say it in, but I've been married twice. <laughs> Absolute <laughs> pro. <laughs> I've been there, done that. Uh, and bounce back and doing it again. Um, life's way too short. But I, in my first marriage, didn't put any value on photography. And even though I am not with that gentleman anymore, it's an important documentation of our life. It's a point in history um, that if you don't even value at this point in time to look at, future generations will. And it's not necessarily about who you were standing with, but it might be a documentation of the fashion at that time or what you put your value in at that time. I love looking at my grandparents' wedding photos and going, well, look at the style of floristry or look at that dress or look at how many were in the bridal party. It's your little addition to history for your family's history. Um, and that's why I think that the guys that are sitting here, from a photography perspective, I value it so greatly now. Um, and it's way up my list, uh, if I do it again. Uh, <laughs> from a film perspective, I think it's something that is such an emerging element of our industry and something that we, which is, at the moment, completely undervalued for the amount of work that goes into it and how they try to capture what they capture and then how they edit it to then give you the tiniest little snippet of what was a very, very big day. Um, so videography for me is also right up there. And as you can tell from me, I like to eat. So um, food is a massive, massive component and it's one that I actually put great value on in terms of the budget. Um, because oh, you can go to religious things and say, oh, you know, the last feast and all of that sort of stuff. But there is massive historical references to people gathering and eating. And nobody eats and feels bad. There's a tiny, tiny minute proportion of our population which does. But the majority of us get great joy out of eating and get great joy out of eating with good people. And then if that food's awesome, you have the best time. So for me, how I base a lot of my events and my planning and value is actually around the food. Um, not leaving Josh out at the end of it. 
It's um. But just don't get us celebrated. No, it's just not important. There's yeah. a there's a lot of conversation <laughs> around the value yeah. associated with how much you pay for a celebrant's fees. Let me tell you that they earn it, and let me tell you that it is actually what you're there for. There is nothing else. The meal's great. Getting to see your friends is great, and you know, seeing grandma's awesome. But for that 15 minutes, that's the whole reason you've planned for. It's the sharing and exchanging of those vows in front of those people. And if the person that's officiating that's a dick or has no excitement in their voice or mispronounces your surname, (laughs) wears a name tag or puts a freaking doily with love and family on your signing table (laughs) and a little feather pen, it's probably not the right match. So it is really important to think about the value of your celebrant because, yes, in comparison to other components, you might look at it and go, oh, but it's only 15 minutes. I can guarantee you that it's worth so much more than those 15 half an hour that they're in front of you and it's not just the meeting that they've had with you prior. Um, It's the thought and processes that have gone into articulating something that's referencing you. Um, I've forgotten what the question is, and I'm really you answered good, it, yeah. really good at rambling. Uh, but yeah, that's how I distribute budget. All right, Brindo, uh, how question. much, mate? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, budget for for us. Just a mic drop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think Amy covered all of it just then. <laughs> how do I answer that part? Yeah, you know, I was thinking um, about food as Amy was um, talking about it. The, like uh, particularly from my own personal experiences as, as a celebrant, like the the cultures, the the, the cultural mm. groups that party the best, they got food. Like partic- yeah. like honestly, if if you in your inquiry form, if you say you're having a Jewish wedding or an Islander wedding, like I'm there, I'm not even gonna charge you. It'll be a great day. <laughs> 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 like 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 particularly, like everyone likes to party, but honestly, like, there's nothing like an Islander party. Great. <laughs> right. I mean, look, food. No matter which way you cut the mustard, we we've, we've all got our unique and important roles in in all of these events and food is a big part of it. Um, Food, to put a monetary value on catering is, for us, I mean, one thing that, you know, on, we have a lot of people working on our side for an event. So, I mean, Amy or Rachel or the boys or you know, even some, I mean, they're, they're individuals, so to speak. I mean, Rachel have a little team on or Amy might have a little team on, but the photographers are just photographers and you, you're just purely one person shooting something. But with us, we've got bar staff, wait staff, chefs, dishwashers, guys to wash all the glassware that comes back from the bar. Like there's so much more for us that we unfortunately, you know, need to equate for in our charging. And it's a really, unfortunately, catering is one of your biggest bills in, in, in your wedding outside of, you know, maybe your venue hire or um, your, your overall, you know, you could almost take your venue hire, your photographer and, and, and your style sometimes, but, and your caterer is almost going to be just as much as all of those people combined. But the reason for that is we've got, Depending on the size of an event, we've got four to five days of preparation, bulk amounts of food coming in that needs to get processed and organised and and delivered on time. So seafood needs to come in, you know, very late in the piece, but, you know, you'll, you'll prep all the sauces and everything like that very early in the week. So there's so many moving parts to that and there's so many staff on the day that we need to make all that food happen. Then you've got your plates, your cutlery on the tables, your glassware on the tables, there's, you know, depending on the um, venue that you're in, sometimes we need to bring in cooking equipment, generators, cool rooms. So, unfortunately, our bill is always the biggest one. <laughs> but, uh, so, you know, so, give us to us um, in, in, like, frank terms. Yeah. Like, uh, I, I don't know whether you're going to starting prices or, like, the last, yeah, uh, out of the last five weddings we did, it was... Yeah. Fifty bucks a head, or yeah. like, like, like that's, what, that's what, what are some usually, real things we can take? Usually, away? that's where you're going to start in terms of catering. If you want to get something wholesome and filling, and depending on obviously the length of your weddings or your any event is a really important thing to consider. You know, um, you might have your guests arriving at lunchtime but not leaving until midnight, and if you're only going to serve them, you know, a main course, 
it, it might not be enough food. You know, so it's that's God, those are breeds. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're serving a lot of lamb, you know. But that they're important things to really consider your length of your event, um, and that will tell the tale of how much money is needs to be allocated. But fifty dollars would be a starting price. For oh, it would be. Something. I was making that up. I thought it'd be no, a lot no. More. It would be, but that would purely kind of you know, and I'll just be. I like to be honest, but it, that'll get you like an entree and a main, and, and that'll be pretty much it, you know, because you've got staff to pay and da, 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 da. there's so many moving parts. But, I mean, if you have got a really long day where your guests are arriving at X time and leaving at Y time and there's 12 hours of standing up and celebrations and movement and dancing, then that $50 is just not going to cut the mustard and you want to pump that up to make sure no one's leaving and having to go to Macca's. Like, so like, what's a, what's a super like, like a stupid expensive wedding? Like the, like, a, oh, look, you know, Thor's they, getting married. I mean, the most expensive <laughs> wedding we ever did was $250 a head. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. But they, I mean, that was something that was just the, the amount of food that they had was just insanity. Like, Oyster bars, sashimi bars, big dumpling bars. They had canapes, six different types of canapes. Like, then they had a four course dinner. They had a big ice cream station, a big cheese station at the end, a late night feast as guests were getting on the bus to leave. And, and these people were having cocktails. And, you know, so that was like starting at 12 o'clock uh, at lunchtime and going right through till 11.30 at night. So that was obviously a, a big wedding. 120, yeah, 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 yeah. And I mean, it, 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 and you do the math, and, and as I said, like that, in order to facilitate that, there was five chefs on for that day, and there was 14 wait staff and three barmen, two dish hands, like an army of staff all getting paid, you know, that 25 to $30 an hour to be there. And you, know, you only have to do the math, it's like, it, that basically almost works out to be fourteen hundred dollars an hour just on the staff alone to facilitate the food getting served. So your catering budget's always going to be a bigger one, and I always like to try to be very like level about that, you know, because um, an allocating budget is a big part of knowing where your catering is really going to sit and and how big a part of the day you want that to be. But you know, there's so many options that you can do now to provide your guests with cheaper options, but I think it's important to understand what you're going to, you know, how extravagant are you going to make it, how many staff do you want, or do you want to strip it right back and do something super, super simple, like, you know, yeah, get Domino's delivered or something. <laughs> but yeah, understanding where you lie and what you want essentially for that day and how how much of an emphasis you want on each and every part and how much allocation you put in your budget for a wedding in terms of like how important is this for us? Like do we want this big grand event and it fully catered for or do we want to not worry so much about that, strip it right back, keep it very simple and spend more money on photography and videography and styling. I think it really comes down to really being honest with yourselves about what's most important. You know, yeah, on your yeah, day. Yeah. The um the per head fee was really helpful for our guest list. because yeah. okay. like, like, like we got the we got the quote and like oh he's not a one twenty friend. He's a <laughs> <laughs> he's he's like a Big Mac large meal friend. Yeah. It's not a yeah. <laughs> There's no way I'm spending that money on mum. Like I like him, <laughs> but just not <laughs> uh, all right, Jared, everyone's have a question. How much? <laughs> Too bad. Nah. Okay, can I just um, say if you ever were like if you ever want to just like annoy a wedding vendor just like new email hi Jared comma full stop how much send <laughs> <laughs> it's like the favorite email we ignore all nah um, yeah I guess the running theme is like what you put value on the most so if you value good food you're going to get you know you're going to put money into that if you value good styling you're going to put money into that I don't know, like just from experience going to being a guest myself at weddings, like I feel like food is a massive one. You either come away hungry or you're so full, you're just like, that was so good. Like I'm full, <laughs> dessert just topped it off. I'm good. I'm good yeah, to go. Sure. But And then as well as styling as well, like at first, that's like the first impression. Like you walk into a wedding venue, it's like, wow, boom. 
like there's florals everywhere it's like everything's had thought put into it like that's going to be leaving like a lasting impression on all the guests and on your day um so i think those things can't be overlooked because they're, th they're like two of the main things that you come away from a wedding like remembering like there's a there's a long list of i guess small details from jewelry to the dress to the and like you know once you start planning a wedding you've got like a list of like a hundred things and then a day later you've got another hundred things like i swear <laughs> it, it just keeps growing but that's what people are going to come away and remember like the food the the styling all of that the celebrant on the day the ceremony what their vibe was on the day and then i guess our part is like we're in the shadows but like <laughs> we're then documenting that and then um just the shadows. You just yeah. photos of sh that's it. That's it. Screaming that was your grandpa's shadow. <laughs> <laughs> and then I guess we're documenting that. So it all it always like yeah, it's all a big bundle, and you got to really think about what you put value on. And I think like it, like it was said that video is only just now becoming like a you know a more thought of thing when you're planning your wedding. Um, Obviously, like, I think photography has always been a given. It's like, all right, photos, yeah. But then video is like, you either, if you value it, you're like, that's a given. Like for me, being a videographer on my wedding, I was like, sure, I'm going to pour money into that because I love videos. I love, I love films. Um, but I think, where was I? You're Jared. I'm Jared. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, but obviously, like, if films isn't on your, if film isn't a massive thing to you, then you're obviously going to pour more into the photography. But um, yeah, I guess just comes back to that thinking about what do you value the most, and then pouring your time researching that or putting your money into that. Um, yeah, getting that vendor or that that person. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah, that's, a good, that's a good question. Can I pre-introduce yeah. that? I um, So I'm videotaping this with the video stuff that I use for my ceremonies. And the reason I did that is I thought I'm very capable of doing that. And I wanted to save couples getting a, like, because I, I had a couple who got a $300 videographer. And it was a terrible, like, because, like, we all know, hopefully you guys know, a $300 videographer is not a great videographer. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, if all they want is a just a straight on, non arty, non video, non beautiful, but a journalistic recording of the ceremony, and I can do that. Um, so just please let the $300, $300 videographer stay in bed that day. <laughs> So, uh, so th that's why I do so. Like, it's just part of my normal package. I just do a video, and so, so I suppose to go hand over to you. I guess three hundred is like a lower limit for. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I guess, like for example, I had, uh, I've had a couple couples now, couple couples, um, come to me with after you know post wedding day months down the track, and they said we. We booked a videographer. It was actually a friend of a friend that we got for like three, four hundred bucks. And we're like, that's sweet. We're like, you know, we poured money into everything else. And they're like, video, you know, we'll just get our friend to do it because that'll be sweet. And then um, I get an email from this couple saying we had, you know, we had a friend of a friend do it and the video came up terrible. We want you to re edit it. <laughs> so <laughs> I think, I guess like you want to, you want to think about that um that price bracket i guess when you're when videographers are entering the market and same with photography i guess you're going to charge under i don't know i guess a thousand bucks say and you see you you know you'll get a photographer you'll get a videographer but if someone's been in the industry for you know longer than a few years they're honing in on their style and what they're really good at and the you know their whole vibe of their work then I guess you're looking at upwards of like, you know, three grand and you're going to get someone that's good at what they do. And then above that, if, you know, I guess more so, but, um, I guess then in the other, on the other side of it, it's like, you've, I guess 
it's hard to navigate, I guess, because with photographers and videographers, you can find people that have shot so-and-so's wedding, so they're charging 10K, 15K, like something insane. But I guess then it's up to you not to look at what they've put on it, but to work out what value you put on their work, if that makes sense. So if you look at their, you look at a photographer, a videographer that's charging 15K because they've shot so-and-so's wedding off home and away or, you know, whatever it is, look at their portfolio, meet up with them, and then look at another photographer, videographer that's in your, you know, your price bracket, meet up with them and then, you know, compare it. Be like, do I, do I want to pay that extra for that, this work or that, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I can see you're still hurting from not getting the home and away wedding. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I didn't land that one. So. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll offer um, a, a, a different angle on that conversation as well. Uh, I'm sure we've seen like the photographer, videographer on a current affair or in the Gold Coast Bulletin or whatever, and they've gone out of business and the, and the current affair is chasing them down. Um, like those guys aren't charging more than three grand. And, and I've known one of them personally um, before that moment in his life. And, uh, and I even know, I know a guy who almost went there on the Sunshine Coast and, and what they do, because the price you're paying isn't only for the exact hours that they worked. Mm. It's also, it's like commissioning someone to be an artist for you. And, and the guys that go out of, out of business is because they take on too much and they actually physically can't process the work. And then because they're overstressed and they're overworked, they'll, they'll lose an SD card with a memory card or they'll, you start making errors because you've overcommitted yourself. It'd be like being married to four different people. Like you'd eventually start making mistakes because you've just overloaded yourself emotionally. And it's the same with those videographers and photographers. And I, I saw a, a, a wedding dress company, the same thing that they, they don't charge enough. And so they get overloaded with business and they sink under the weight of that, which is a real thing. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Chase, how much? Um. <laughs> No, nah, it's, it's a good question, but even even just like bouncing off what you just said, that's that's a big a big one. I think because um, I remember I don't get it so much these days, but when I first started out, especially even like people like, oh, you shoot weddings, oh, that's pretty good. You get to slap a bit of extra money on there, like because <laughs> there's this real perception, you know, like the wedding tax. the wedding industry. Oh, I'm a band and I'm playing at a wedding, I get to charge more. But um, it's funny because like like I hate. I hate to even kind of like, you know, be bringing this up or comparing, but most of my friends who are photographers, like architecture, advertising, if you actually break down at what we get paid per hour, it's pretty much the same, if not less as a wedding photographer. But I think people fail to take into account the amount of hours we spend, exactly what you just said, like doing all that extra work. And I think if if you kind of break it down, like for, especially like I – I'm good. I'm in a good position that I don't need to think about money too much. I'm very lucky that my partner does all the accounting and stuff. So if someone inquires, she does the booking and I just, I don't really meet the couple until they're already locked in. And then I, I like, literally said to him tonight, you booked an Italy wedding. Like, oh, did we? I, I, I actually don't know how much we charge, <laughs> like, which sounds bizarre, but I don't really care. Like I'm not, a, I, as bizarre as it is, I'm not really that interested in it. Like I, like, you know, I shouldn't say, but I, I always say longer than I should. And I just, I like taking photos. And I feel like we charge enough to be able to run a business and be able to do it full time. Like we charge enough that we can kind of live off it and all the other expenses that go into it, like, you know, lots of hard drives and that kind of thing. There's things that you don't think about when you're an amateur, but when you're full time and you need to kind of like provide a professional service and all the back end that goes into it. I feel like we charge pretty reasonable and at, at the same time like I got, I'm friends with heaps of wedding video wedding videographers photographers in the industry and we all charge pretty similarly from like most of my friends at least and I think it really just comes down to like what style you want you know rather than like there's some probably out there who are charging a lot of money and maybe drive a Ferrari but they probably you know they shot some celebrities wedding and they're riding off the back of that but for the most part I do feel like the industry is pretty pretty flat. I, uh, because I do a lot of receptions as an MC and sometimes DJ as well. And, uh, I can always tell if there's someone like Jace and they're like, cause there's a category of photographers that, that Jace sits in and they might have a 10 hour package or they might've sold a 10 hour package. And they've been, they've been there 12 hours 
and it's just cool. Like it's they're not stressing about it. But the photographer who's like not at that rate, it's like, oh guys, I've been here for eight hours. Um, let's toss the like they're kind of speeding the reception along because I've I've got three minutes left on my eight hour package. And literally, I saw someone. Have you guys seen the little PayPal tap and like they were kind of in your pocket PayPal things, and they wanted to charge for the extra hour oh. there. And the real thing I saw, and I'm just like, I would die if if I had to do that. I would just die inside. Um, <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's, it's crazy, yeah. So uh, I suppose to, to I can tell you honestly, um, like my fee to do a ceremony is 1,700, including GST. And uh, and that's for a local ceremony without travel. Um, and then also MC for an extra thousand, uh, DJ for an extra thousand on that. And so I like, like my pricing is very simple uh, because I um, I don't have hours packages or anything because it's I'm too simple for that. I don't really have the intellectual capacity to go. It's been eight hours. Here's my PayPal thing. <laughs> um, but yeah, I I can tell you that everyone charges differently, and um, and in the end. I suppose I had something that I wanted to say at some point across the night. I haven't really found the right point apart from here. That I feel traditionally, and I'm sure you guys could answer this as well, that we get a lot of emails saying, hey, are you available on the 11th of October next year? And you say yes or no. And you say no. And then the whole conversation ends because that person has, um, and look, this is a real thing. And so don't feel bad if you're this person. But you've booked the venue and the venue, so you've done that. And now I've got to find the rest of my squad. And I would heavily encourage anyone and everyone to say, look, we'll totally be shopping for a venue, but also assemble a team. It's like, I really need these people to be my wedding suppliers at this venue and then have a conversation and say, hopefully we can make this date work or maybe there's three dates or that kind of thing. Um, unless the date's really important to you, then obviously I, I value that. But I, I know that there's a lot of people that would like to hire all of us and we've just said no because they've already put a deposit down. And, uh, and that's, yeah, that was just... It was me just dropping a little wedding wisdom bomb. <laughs> um, and actually, I might, I'll end the night asking all of you guys for maybe there's just a thing. It doesn't have to be directly related to what you do, uh, but just something you wish you could tell couples getting married today, like just for the love of God, you know, whatever it is. Um, but before I ask that question of these guys, because that'll be that'll wrap up the night, I wanted to just give anyone here the opportunity to ask a question that might be burning. Uh, if you've got that, I'm not going to hover for hours and make it awkward, but if you've got that, just give me a yay and you can ask a question. Oh, do I need the mic? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> um, I have a question. Yeah. What would be your favourite moment to capture in an entire wedding? So from the ceremony to reception, just one moment, what's something oh, that yeah. you must get, like every single wedding? I have a a lot of like little favorite moments like uh, an obvious one's probably when the groom first sees the bride but it it doesn't happen at every wedding because it depends on the dad but i really love it when the bride just comes out and the dad sees her like that's an epic moment sometimes not so epic which is sad <laughs> but when it's special it's ve it's really special i love love that moment i just any moments it's just like it's real you know what i mean like i I did one a few months back and this dad was so overwhelmed, like just lost it. it. Yeah, and it was oh, like there so was, emotional. it was so cute because it was like I could shoot away and I wasn't there. Like he was just so captivated with his daughter and it was like I get emotional at weddings. Like, yeah, it was cute. So that's probably it. Yeah. Perfect. That's actually And um, was it yourself? <laughs> I was going to ask, is there going to be an opportunity at the end to ask questions and talk to each person individually? Yeah, so kind of off, yeah, totally. We're all kind of be hanging around. Okay. But is there something you want to, like, while I've got? No. No? <laughs> Do you want to find out what their favourite colour is? <laughs> What's your favourite colour, guys? <laughs> yeah, so after this, it'll just be a casual. <laughs> uh, anyone else? Oh, cool. Um, but yeah, there'll totally be an opportunity. Oh. Um, my question is for Jace as well. Sorry, love you all. But um, I'm thinking, I've just been thinking in the last few weeks about our photography. We've already booked our photographer. I'm sure yeah, you're amazing. Yeah, yeah, but cool. <laughs> um, And I was just thinking the other day, I attended another wedding, my brother's wedding, who had a number of 
like a few different sh- like photographer, same photographer but different shoot like a number of shooters. Oh, yeah. And I was like watching a few moments and thinking about ours. What's your opinion on potentially having a second shooter there? Like obviously that's uh, our photographer offers it on our packages. Oh, yeah, yeah. And so you obviously it's one yet? Like, no, we've just booked we've just booked her. Yeah. But there were just moments like especially when everyone left for their um, for the bridal party photos, and yeah. for me in my head. Like bringing my whole family together is going to be such a huge thing, and I think how like us. How big is your ha- wedding? We've got 120 people. Yeah, okay. So, but I just think like us leaving for bridal party photos. That whole um, what everyone else is going to be doing, like on the yeah. front lawn, and like I don't kind of want to miss that as well. Yeah, like I just want to capture well, everything. It, it sounds like you might need to book that <laughs> second <laughs> shooter because from the way you're saying it, because. That's that's kind of what I, I'd ask you is like, because what I always say is like, like, honestly, you won't miss a second shooter because when you look back at the photos, you just see all the photos mm. and those other photos aren't there. But at the same time, I find like smaller weddings, I'm I'm perfectly comfortable capturing it myself. But at the same time, like if it's a bit bigger or there's just any weddings where there's a lot happening, it's just, it is so good to have two two photographers and two videographers really like it's it's weddings are just massive and so much happens and like you said if there's guests interacting and it's just a second pair of eyes like you know because even i you know i'm trying to be as attentive as i can to everything that's happening like you just really a photographer on the day you just like people watching everything but you can't see everything and just being able to have someone on the other side of the room keeping an eye on other things that are happening, it's, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I got to do it. And she literally is so stoked that she had the two. Because for the exact thing, this moment when you guys are there, like, that's she, that's yeah, it. that, so, yeah. I am, I went through, I, I did a wedding with a friend in Sydney. Uh, he's a photographer and he had a second shooter. And, uh, and I often get the images to share someone's social. And so I downloaded them onto a folder. And you order by, like, they're ordered by time shot. And it was, it was actually really cool. I still remember going through this, like, so you go through the ceremony and then after the ceremony, kind of, you know, hugs and kisses, family photos, group photo, whatever. And then, and then the timeline kind of diverged, but it's all just one list of files because it's like, you know, like pretty, beautiful, dad, you know, chugging a beer, beautiful, pretty, <laughs> you, know, you know, like telling a joke with an uncle. Like it was just kind of cool seeing the photos in that order because obviously there's two photographers shooting at the same time. And so it's like 5.06 PM and this hilarious things happening on the lawn. And then also pretty photo of the sunsets and lovely. <laughs> it was a really beautiful kind yeah, of experience. That's cool. yeah, that's awesome. uh, final shout out questions. Cool. So um, I'll, uh, I'll answer my question first and then I'll give it up to you guys. Um, just, just something you, you wish the world would know about just having a wedding and, uh, and I'll answer as someone who stands in this position a lot, and I understand it compromises photo and video, so there's, it's a larger conversation. But uh, I, I just always think, just think about the sun at ceremony time. I saw these photos from a wedding in Cairns the other day, oh, and I looked at the photos, and I remember kind of like how you guys would look at your wedding photos, but I'm the celebrant looking at it this way, and like, I remember wanting to die. And you look at the photos and I look like I want to die. Like I'm literally red like a lobster because I was just like 2 p.m. can sun and just full sun. And like you can see the sweat beads and I'm just, and so I just, I always encourage people just like think about, you know, uh, whether if you're on the beach, like 1 p.m. on any beach anywhere is just terrible. <laughs> so just and have a conversation with your photographer, you know, celebrant, you know, wedding planner, whatnot, how you can best encapsulate sun and light and time. Cause yeah. I've just find that's something that so many people just don't take into account, particularly there's a lot of venues that'll have a such and such calm curfew, like say a 10 PM curfew and they sell a 10 hour package. And so, well, midday ceremony, there we go. That's just what it is. And so my encouragement is that it's your wedding. You get to do it how you like it. And yes, there are factors. Like, yes, the sunset is at such and such a clock and the photographer would love you there. But it's all flexible. So um, that's what I wish the world knew about weddings. It's funny. I wasn't going to say that, but it made me think. Like, I, I did a wedding last year and one of the groomsmen fainted. It was that hot. And I think a lot of times people plan their weddings. Like, 
I don't know, you forget what summer's like in the middle of summer when you when it's winter and you're like, oh, it'll be fine. Yeah. But then when it's actually the middle of summer and everyone's in suits and, like, direct sunlight and there's no shade and, yeah, they're, like, Grimson passes out and they're, like, have to restart the ceremony again and then it's like, can you delete those photos? I'm like, okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's a good one. But I would, I would say, just as a, like, this is a very general, broad thing, but um, as <laughs> simple as this sounds, like, try to like once if you got good vendors i know it's like obviously you need good vendors and stuff but at the same time it's like once all that's locked in just forget about all of it and just enjoy your day because i know for me personally like people always ask me like oh what's the most expensive wedding you've shot and i'm like it doesn't doesn't really interest me to be honest like i'm like they aren't my favorite ones like i've done crazy expensive ones i've done backyard budget ones and it's i find like how cool the wedding is for me like documenting it has no relation to how much money they spent it's actually the the connection i know i'm a photographer so i want people to have a connection but it it is it is so much about like and i've also seen it like if a bride doesn't have a planner and they've they've diy'd it and some people their personality they're very good at that but some people that i can see that it's in the back of their mind they're constantly stressing about the next thing that's going to happen on the day and they can't enjoy it and just when they can switch off from all that and just enjoy it it just it makes my job easy because i just yeah. shoot everything that's happening rather than them stressing about all the little details and so as much as you can like do it all right beforehand so on the day you can switch off and just get married um yeah as, i guess mine was pretty similar but in fact i guess I think it's so important to meet with each individual vendor, if you can, before your day. Um, I think as I've heard a lot of stories after a wedding that, you know, there's a specific vendor or someone that they hadn't met up with, but they'd seen the work or the portfolio and then that actually killed the vibe on the day. Um, and I think like, even, if, even if your photos are good and your video are good and your food's good, like every, you know, every element is good, but the vendors clashed or they had a bad vibe on the day. Like, I don't think you want to, you don't want to have that at the expense of the vibe on your day. Cause that's what you're going to go away with. Like it's more about your day and what you come away feeling and the whole experience of it for you and your guests. So I think, yeah, meet up with your vendors. If you can get recommendations from them. I think that's super important as well. Cause they've obviously worked with stylists and, caterers photographers everything and they can they can you know say from a personal opinion i've worked with this person they're a super cruisy person on the day you know they catered to all my needs on the day um and everything flowed and i think that's what you want you don't want to have like clashing on the day or something you know go wrong at the expense of other things you know yeah, yeah. if i can add on to that mm. like take take videographer and photographer recommendations from each other. Like I, I know there's photographers who won't work, who won't work with certain videographers yeah. and, and vice versa, yeah, yeah. just because those two guys are working very closely yeah, on the day. Like, yeah. in fact, would you say like usually like one per, cause you kind of two leaders. So one person would kind of take an artistic direction. Yeah, yeah. And so the videographer sometimes needs to be able to still take responsibility for his or her product but also kind of fall into line. It's totally. a really unique relationship. Yep. And then many times they're completely like, you've got two separate relationships, like two separate invoices, two separate mm. contracts, yet you're expecting them to work well together. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, totally. And it might just be fun to get a to videographer and photographer that hate each other and pair them up for the wedding. Like it might just be really awesome. <laughs> <I'm fine. laughs> yeah. Or it might be super awkward. <laughs> yeah, totally. No, I think that's, that's, that's a super important point. And um, as well as that, obviously you have a style in mind of, photography and videography you like to so try and find both that match well together um you don't want to have like a photographer that's super like you love photography work that's you know classy timeless candid and all of that and then you get a videographer that's super opposite so that's like 100 percent that's going to clash because you got someone trying to shoot those candid moments those you, you know they the day as it unfolds and then you've got someone else trying to set up shots or stage shots or try to make it ha make the day unfold as the way they see it through their camera if that makes sense so i think that's super important and yeah 
getting referrals from your photographer, your videographer who they've worked really well with before is more important, I think, than how the work comes out, you know. I think that's really important, yeah. Brendo, what's your wedding wisdom well, banger? One. Um, okay, everything that has been covered thus far I think is really important. My big one um, is the, the ones that I've seen go south the most are when people have um, got too caught up in their overall perception of what their perfect day was going to be, like getting too caught on the perfect details. So, you know, the, the gown wasn't long, like the bridal veil wasn't long enough and just falling to pieces because of that. Like, or, or for example, you know, they there was one a little while ago and, you know, it was an outdoor venue and we, we discussed, you know, there being a wet weather plan and, and a wet weather plan wasn't considered because like, oh, it won't rain, it won't rain, you know, and I was like, well, it, it might. <laughs> it might, you never know. It's just good to have an idea of what, you know, so just like not getting too caught up in um, everything you want it to be completely down to the most minute perfect detail I think is really important because if you do that then you can get you can just lose sight of the overall reason why you're there in the first place so that that's probably my biggest one is just you know relaxing and and letting the day unfold but just enjoying the company that you have around you is my biggest May that's just my biggest one. give us the hit did it rain it did rain yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it did rain <laughs> And it was a nightmare. <laughs> it was a total nightmare. <laughs> yeah. you, just left, you left us hanging there. I obviously. never said I told you so. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, um, Amy, if you've got you've got forty five minutes. Uh, you're waiting. Oh, let me take it away. <laughs> um, no, mine is exactly that. It's the ability to let go. Yeah. It really is. And whether you choose to do that the week of forty eight hours prior, twenty four hours prior, don't let it be the morning of that you let go. Yeah. Let go the night before. Go to bed knowing that you've got the right team in place, that the plans are in place, that everybody knows how to execute. That you've 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 got the trust in the people that you've asked to execute it. If you can wake up that next day on your wedding day and go, I can get married, yeah. that's what we all want. We don't want you there going, okay, so when is she going to deliver the flowers? And, oh, my God, okay, well, that wasn't the peony colour that I wanted, you know, or oh, I really thought the place setting was going to be like this. Let it go because if you've got the right vendors in place, they will execute it to the best of their ability with your best intentions in mind. And you will enjoy your day a hundredfold more yeah, yeah. because it's not you you won't i promise you and everyone will say it your day goes really fast yeah. and you won't even notice those things you won't you'll be so overjoyed with your day you might look back at the photos in the film and go okay yeah i remember i didn't really want it like that but you know what there's a reason why that seating plan ended up in three parts last week and I wasn't going to not have a seating plan, but I executed it to the best of my ability given what I had to work with. So I think if you can wake up that day and go, okay, cool, I've got a great team in place, I'm going to enjoy my day, that's that's what you want to aim for. That's what you want to aim for. If you can clock out the week prior, good on you. <laughs> but usually we're all finishing work that two days prior, maybe a week, and then you do all the final little bits and pieces and seating plans and place cards and all that sort of stuff. But at your absolute latest, the night before you go to bed on your wedding day, if you can sign out then and just enjoy it and go bride, do it. That's that's my number one tip. I've, I've got a gif in mind. Jesus, take the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> um, can we say thanks to the girls from the GC Hitch for hosting the event? <laughs> and uh, on the odd chance you haven't not remembered our names, Amy from the Perfect Party Co., Brendan from Anise, Jared from Jared, Lucas, and Jace from Lucas and Co. And I'm Josh with this. Thanks, guys. And uh, please, like, you're welcome to leave or welcome to harass us or steal pot plants. Lauren, we can steal all the pot plants. Is that how? Yeah, she's in the office now. So once she's in the office, take what you need. 